All right, my little internet friends. How's it going tonight? Um, I got a little work to do here, but uh, I thought before I did that, I would show you a few things. Uh, first, you got to get yourself a beer into you. King of beers. Uh, remember I told you a buddy of mine there, I did a little job for him and uh, he uh, rewarded me with this motor. This is a half horse Balder DC motor and a speed controller. Uh, it's got a power button. Power is on now. It's got a little digital readout that doesn't really work too well anyway. It just says it's on. Uh, and then it's got a on button, start button start stop so, and a remote thing but there is no remote for it I guess all it would be would be uh, power going to another rheostat so anyway turn it on we got speed low check that out man real slow I can get that down to geez that's only maybe 100 rpm 150 RPM, pretty sweet. Full bore. Anyway, turn it down, power it off. So this is gonna make a great little belt sander. Um, I'm gonna make a one inch belt sander out of this one because really a half horse is not enough to do a two by 72 belt sander. But I do plan on building one of those eventually. Uh, just, it's kind of like this thing. You have to get lucky enough to come across this uh, pretty sweet setup, you know, just for uh, building a small thing for a guy. And uh, it'd just be a nice thing to have in the shop. It says it's 1,750 RPMs. And uh, yeah, if all else fails, uh, this DC motor, um, you just reverse it and you've got a generator head. So uh, ideal for a small wind turbine. Um, anyway, we're moving on to the project now. Um, I'm going to do a project right now that uh, is just going to blow you away. If, if you don't have a forge and you're a young guy trying to get into this or even an older guy trying to get into it, uh, uh, I thought to myself, what is the ch absolute cheapest way a person could make a coal forge or a charcoal forge? And uh, I went and I got a bathroom fan. I know these work because I've used them before. They're pretty good because it's a high volume thing. Not a lot of pressure, but high volume. And um, it works pretty good, actually. And we got a little bag of parts here. Let's see what we got. Now, this can work in a variety of configurations, but uh, uh, my biggest problem was I thought the store was open till six o'clock, and uh, well, six o'clock now, and I'm just back from there. I walked in there; it was like uh, they close at 5:30 on Monday. That's a country hardware store for you. But uh, anyway, I pulled in there. I only had five minutes, so I had to grab everything in five minutes. So I know I'm missing a few things that I probably would have used. Um, but this is going to be sort of the most basic setup of it. Uh, all you need is a bathroom fan. Uh, this was the cheapest one I could get. It was 20 bucks and it was on sale for $16 or $16.99 or something. So that's $16 and basically my whole bill was $44.99 and that included a uh, uh, smaller size bag of Kingsford here. And it was $7 so which is kind of high for this stuff. It's a uh, like a 10 pound bag, 8 pound bag. So, anyway, we're gonna, I'm gonna throw this thing together real quick and we'll see what it does. So, uh, let's go over what I picked up first. Uh, these are two inch pipes. Um, the cap is two, a two inch cap. You got a two inch elbow, but the cap is galvanized. Uh, I know we've had this talk before, but. Uh, uh, if it's outdoors, which this forge would be anyway, uh, this is only a small amount of galvanizing and I guarantee it's going to burn off really fast inside the bottom of the forge because the cap's going to become your, uh, 
Uh, we're going to drill that out, and that's going to be your uh, your final piece on the forge. And we got a little piece of elbow here. Uh, you need something that's three inch to uh, go from the fan to this here. So uh, this was the only thing they had that I could grab real quick. It's it's aluminum, which is not really ideal, but not you know it shouldn't get that hot under there anyway because uh, the the fan's got a plastic flange on it. So. Anyway, I'm going to I'm going to throw this stuff together real quick and show you. Okay, before we go any further here, like. I just want to show you the fan. Uh, what's kind of neat about these fans is um, you can hardwire them, which is what they're designed for, but they actually come with uh, right on the right on the fan motor is a plug, which is cool. So you just leave this hanging out and you can just plug your cord in there. Um, if you were hardwiring it, you plug it in after you've hardwired it down the side here, but uh, you don't need to do that. Uh, they also come with a little uh, flapper valve in here. It's right here. I don't know if you can see it, but you can just pull that right out, chuck that away. You throw the throw the cover away. I'll throw the instructions away. You don't need none of that crap. And uh, get yourself a three-inch piece of pipe and get that to fit over this. Uh, get that to fit over this. I'm gonna try and wiggle it on there. Okay, so there you go. This is a three-inch elbow, adjustable elbow. You can twist these until they're straight or any sort of angle you need. And that just slides right over there and it's pretty tight. You might want to put a couple little sheet metal screws through there just to hold it on or just tape it on there real good with some duct tape. Okay, so here's the setup for the tier. Um, it's just a two inch elbow, two inch piece of pipe, whatever length you need, and a two inch cap. Um, uh, I went with this size iron because that's all the store had. Uh, if they had two and a half, I probably would have used that because it would have fit this. Uh, it would have fit this a little bit better. Uh, I'm not overly concerned about it. It's likely to work in some way, but uh, try and get the two and a half inch pipe because the outside is going to be pretty close to three inch. Be a little bit better fit, a little more volume of air, and the cap you'll be able to put bigger holes in it because you need to get that volume of air through this cap. Um, it has to be iron. Iron won't burn. At least it won't burn very well. It may melt and um, also when you put this together uh, don't tighten this up very much. You want to be able to get this out easily later on in case you need to make a new one. This is going to become a sort of a consumable part for you. Okay, so all we got to do is drill this out um, I gotta put it in the vise. Try to protect the threads. Use a use an old leather glove before you clamp those threads in your vise, so you don't mess them up. Okay, let's see if we got this right now. This is what you want. This is what I have. It's not what exactly what you want. This is sort of the setup, but the wrong size, um, just because I couldn't get it. So just to just to go back over it again, you want this to be two and a half inch pipe, two and a half inch elbow. These can be galvanized. These two pieces. Um, you're going to run. The next piece is going to be one of these things. It's just a reducer. It's got male on this end, female is a smaller one. So what you want is a uh, 
this is going to be for a two and a half inch pipe because that's going to fit into this two and a half inch elbow. Now this is just an example. This one's way too small and I couldn't find one tonight. But if you were doing this right, this would be a two and a half inch elbow, galvanized. This would be a reducer, not galvanized. And what that does is that holds it to your, um, oops, see how small it is. This holds it to your brake drum. So if you can find a brake drum with a hole in it that's two and a half inches, or make it two and a half inches, then this is going to clamp the brake drum to this. You want it so that the hole in the brake drum is not as big as this part, so it doesn't fall through. So you'll end up with that, like kind of like that, right? Then this is going to be two inch, which this one is. Um, you're going to drill all these holes in there. It can be galvanized or not. Get not galvanized is preferred. That will screw into the top of that reducer. So you're going to go from a two and a half to a two. And uh, I don't have a brake drum kicking around, so since I have that plasma cutter over there, I'm just going to burn something out that's got a two in it, two inch hole, in it, two and a half inch hole. Um, and uh, I'm going to gear it up that way just to show you how well this blower will work. So well, here's the plate I just cut. It's about. Uh, I don't know. Overall, it's 20 by 20. I haven't been in yet. So that would make it probably about 16 inches. It's got the hole for the thing there out of 3 sixteenths. Um, you know, if you're willing to pay for it, I can make these for you. But uh, maybe when I, uh, I'll get the kit a little more refined. Maybe I'll sell the kit or whatever. But, uh, you know, this can easily be made out of a brake drum, you know. You don't need to be buying things like this if you're trying to keep your forge cheap. It can be made out of just about anything. Um, you know, stainless steel is ideal because eventually this will rust and rot away. But anyway, all you gotta do now is bend it. So now I'm going to put the tear in there and uh, I'm going to have to weld mine in because I don't have that, that uh, reducer. If you have a reducer it makes your job a lot easier because I have to weld this cast iron to this steel and I'm just going to weld it on there for now for demonstration reasons so I can show you how the forge will work but uh, it's not really ideal. Okay, so there you go. That's the uh, that's the quick setup of the forge. Mine's a little nicer than you'll have, likely, um, just because I happen to have a plasma cutting machine. But uh, if you're interested in one of these pans, I I can sell you one pretty cheap. But uh, you know, you could probably get one made pretty cheap from a local metal worker or something. But uh, if you just use a brake drum instead of this pan, it'll work just fine. You'd probably have to build some kind of table around the uh, the brake drum. So here's our little blower setup. It's just a 50 CFM fan, little three inch elbow. And we're just gonna set that right on there. And uh, likely if you get the two and a half inch material, it'll work a little better than mine's gonna work. Um, again, just for demo purposes, I'm not even gonna tape it on there or anything. I got a lot of bypass air, so yours should work better than mine. So let's just, uh, let's try it out. Okay, I'm just going to fill this up with charcoal now. That's a whole 8 pound bag.
So anyway, that's it. It works great. Uh, you know, it needs a little modification, which is what I'm going to do. Um, this was just a beginning, and uh, we'll take it from there, and we'll come up with a real nice product. Uh, I think I'll probably sell the kit. I don't know if anyone's interested in the kit. I'll probably sell it for, I don't know, legs and pan and everything. Maybe you'd have to do a tiny bit of welding to weld those little leg pieces on or something, but maybe I can get around that too. I'll figure out a way to get into a small box would be good. And then I'd probably sell them for, I don't know, $150 or something. Fan and everything. Works good though. Looks cool. <laughs> See ya.